we head down to Guy Fleming Trail because that will be a good place to see several of these shrubs. As we walk along the trail, we see a wartstem ceanothus to our left. This is an area that blends together several habitats. It's primarily chaparral, but it also has elements of coastal sage scrub and also the Torrey Pines woodland. The wartstem ceanothus is a member of the buckthorn family. Um, it's a perennial shrub, not generally more than five or six feet tall, although it can grow up to nine feet. We immediately see something that is distinctive, and it tells us why this plant is named wartstem ceanothus. Let's look at these twigs. They have bumps on them that look quite a bit like warts. And so this is an example of a plant where the scientific name is actually pretty informative uh, in describing it, at least uh, if you speak fluent Latin. The species name, varicosis, is related to the Latin word for wart, hence wart-stemmed ceanothus. But where do the warts come from? If you look carefully at the leaves, you'll see that they attach to the twig with a small stalk. This is called the petiole. On most plants, when the leaf drops off, it takes the stalk with it. But with the ceanothus, when the leaf drops, it leaves the petiole, or the stalk, behind, and then it dries up and it turns into this little wart-like structure. The leaves themselves are somewhat small and oval-shaped or maybe elliptical shape, but notice that they're broader at the tip than they are at the base. So instead of being called oval or ovate by botanists, they're called ob-ovate. The ob prefix is used in describing leaves where the apex is broader than the stem. We also see that many of them have a small dimple at the apex, not all leaves have this dimple, however, so if you look especially at younger leaves, uh, you may see that they're smoothly rounded. Uh, they didn't get the memo, I guess. The edges of the leaves are usually fairly smooth, although some leaves have very tiny little teeth. They can be hard to see and sometimes even hard to feel. By the way, you may come across leaf descriptions that refer to the margin of the leaf. This is just another word for the edge. And the word that's used in botany for smooth is entire. So a description of these leaves might be that they are either margin entire or margin toothed. It really would be simpler to just say smooth edged. Wartstem ceanothus usually blooms generally between January to April. Uh, the flowers are mostly white. They typically have five petals with a, a few, maybe four to five, prominent stamens with yellow anthers and dark centers. They're very striking, very pretty. Once the flowers are pollinated, they create fruit, which are small, berry-like structures. These then get covered over with hard shells and they form seed pods. When the pods are ready to release the seeds, they pop open with an audible sound. And they leave behind a bottom part that's quite distinctive. We see a few from last season still on this plant. I have a friend who calls this the Mercedes-Benz plant. Can you see where he got the name? So, that's the wart-stemmed ceanothus. In the next video, we'll look at the spiny redberry.